Hello everybody, welcome to this video lesson. In this video lesson, we are solving a problem from electric charges and fields. The problem is like this. There are two identical positive point charges, each having a charge Q. They are fixed at a separation of 2A along a straight line. So let me draw a diagram for that. There is a charge Q here. There is another charge Q here. They were separated by a distance 2A. This distance is 2A. A charge Q of mass M is placed midway between the two charges. So there is another charge, small Q, also having a mass M placed in the midway. That means this distance is A, this distance is A. Because it is given that total distance is equal to 2A in the problem. Now, for a small displacement compared to A, the charge Q executes simple harmonic motion. First of all, why it executes simple harmonic motion, let us try to understand. So, if you move this Q towards this side, by a small distance x, by a small distance x. So, what happens? This is a positive charge, this is also a positive charge. Between them, there will be a repulsion. So, the new position will be something like this. This is Q. This is another capital Q. This is where the mid charge after moving. So, this distance will reduce. As you have moved by distance x, it becomes A minus x. This distance will increase A plus x. So, what is happening at this instant is, on this middle charge, due to this left side charge, there is a force of repulsion. So, it will go back like this. When it comes here, again there is a repulsion between the charge due to the left side. So, that will be keep on oscillating in a theoretical way for an infinite time. So, that's nothing but a simple harmonic motion. So, why there is a simple harmonic motion? Simply because there is a resultant force acting on that. What is the resultant force acting? Let's try to calculate. When charge Q is moved towards left by a small displacement x. This x value is very small when compared with A as per the given in the problem. He has given it is small compared to that of A. At that instant, that means when the middle charge is at that location, it experiences a resultant force. It experiences resultant force. What is that resultant force is that's what we are now interested to calculate. So, due to this charge, on this charge there is a repulsion like this F1. Due to this charge, on this charge there is a repulsion like this F2. But as A minus X is less, F1 is more than F2. So, resultant force is F1 minus F2. How much is that? We can calculate. Resultant force is F1. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. F1 is between these two. So, capital Q, small q by the distance. A minus X whole square. Minus F2 is between these two. As per Coulomb's inverse square law, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q and Q by that distance is A plus X whole square. That is the resultant force acting. Let us simplify that resultant force and find out how much is that. So, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is common. Capital Q and small q is also common. 1 by A minus X whole square minus 1 by A plus X whole square is the equation that we need to further simplify. So, how much is this? Let's calculate. 
capital Q and small q by 4 pi epsilon naught a minus x whole square multiplied by a plus x whole square in the numerator a plus x whole square minus a minus x whole square that's the equation let us simplify that q1 to q by 4 pi epsilon naught denominator is equivalent to actually a square minus x square whole square numerator is a square plus x square plus 2ax a plus b whole square formula minus a square minus x square actually minus 2ax but there is another minus here minus of minus becomes plus 2ax so the equation will become f resultant equal to capital Q into small q 4 pi epsilon naught this a square and x square will get cancelled 4 a x pi a square minus x square whole square but the condition is given that for a small displacement that means x is smaller than a x square will be much smaller than that of a square so i can ignore this x square that implies what happens to our f resultant f resultant is q1 q by 4 pi epsilon naught 4 a x square i am ignoring this x square a square whole square is nothing but equal to a power of 4 so if you calculate that value it is equal to now a and a gets cancelled q and q by 4 pi epsilon naught 4 x by a cube that's the equation so of course we can calculate cancel this 4 and 4 also that is f resultant we can write the force resultant acting on any body as something like as per the newton second law ma so the value of the ma is equal to q into q by pi epsilon naught x by a cube so acceleration is capital q into small q by pi epsilon naught pi this value let me write that again pi epsilon naught a cube into x of course into mass is also there in the denominator so this is a kind of an equation you know we have learned in a simple harmonic motion for a body in simple harmonic motion acceleration in terms of magnitude is angular velocity square into displacement so if you compare this equation with this equation you can see there is x so in the place of omega square you have q into q by m by epsilon naught a cube that is omega square omega equal to under square root q into q by m pi epsilon naught a cube you know angular velocity can be written like 2 pi by t d theta by dt for one rotation d theta is 2 pi by time period is t q into q by m pi epsilon naught a cube that implies I can write an equation for the time period as t equal to taking that to the other side 2 pi into time period can be further written like 2 pi into root of m pi epsilon naught a cube pi capital Q into small q that's how we can solve the problem thank you for watching keep coming back for more and more video lessons thank you